Well, gracious greetings to you, uh, greetings to you wherever you are in the world today. Welcome to my program. This is Truth Matters. My name is Dia Mudli, uh, and I'm the pastor here at uh, Spirit of Life Reform Baptist Church in Bristol, United Kingdom. And uh, Truth Matters is a program that is a, um, a, a ministry venture from uh, our church uh, to address matters that Christians are facing today. So the program is called Truth Matters. And uh, if you're new to us, we all. Um, if you if you if you found this interesting or enlightening uh, to you. Uh, that you would share with others and um, it's a great joy to be with you today we just finished a podcast last week on uh, the matter of the alpha course and i know the alpha course is such a dangerous course um, i had my guest with me from uh, southampton here in the united kingdom and we spoke in detail about uh, the dangers of the alpha course and so many people have been benefiting from that and um, if you uh, click onto our church uh, YouTube page. You'll be able to get that podcast, which I hope also would be helpful for you. Uh, future content: We're looking to a woman who's leaving Jehovah's Witnesses here in Bristol. Um, she was one who responded to the public preaching of the gospel in our city, and uh, very interested to leave the Jehovah's Witnesses. And we're praying for her uh, that the Lord, the leader and guide her, and uh, we pray that there will come a time where we can talk with her about her experience and, and how she um, um, was leaving that a cultish organization, Jehovah's Witnesses. So that's to come. And uh, we have further content that we're, that, that we're building. Um, this, this day that uh, is, has been given to us, we want to talk more especially about uh, Woolworths, South Africa. Woolworths, South Africa. Now, um, if you're watching this from outside of South Africa, you may not know who Woolworths is. They're a big brand store that goes back many, many, many years. And uh, I remember growing up in South Africa and uh, in the 90s buying baby clothes, my eldest daughter, uh, buying baby clothes from Woolworths. They used to produce very good quality clothes. And to to, to buy from Woolworths meant, uh, you know, you're buying good quality stuff. I, I, I remember um, going to Woolworths. And it was a time where Woolworths was not, were not selling anything else but clothes, uh, clothing. Uh, I think now they sell food and other stuff. But... Uh, uh, so they're they're in the they're in the spotlight this past two weeks uh, regarding their um, their LGBTQ plus agenda Pride Month and uh, well wherever you are in the world this June and July you're bound to see those flags flying you're bound to see those adverts in television on social media or even in your bank wherever you go to they're taking great pride in celebrating this Pride Month uh, we have lots of flags flying around here. In England, as I'm sure you have, wherever you are in the world. Well, actually, in in saying that, there are some countries uh, like Uganda and right now in Kenya who are not flying those flags, and uh, we're, we're we're watching uh, as things develop in that country as legislation is passed there. Um, but in South Africa, um, um, Woolworths is now in the, in the spotlight, and uh, the title of my Truth Matters program uh, today is the Woolworths Pride. How should Christians respond? How should Christians respond? This is uh, the advert that has been coming up. It says, be an ally, um, be an ally, uh, show your colors, it says. As part of our commitment to inclusive uh, justice, we're working towards a world where everyone is accepted, protected, and respected regardless of sexual orientation, gender identity, or gender expression. Uh, shop a uh, limited edition pride range and will donate a portion of the proceedings uh, of the proceeds sorry towards the lgbtq plus qia plus um, uh, support organizations now there's a whole lot in that and uh, we're going to talk about that and uh, to help me today i've got a guest from south africa and we want to welcome today uh, brother billy baker from cape town in south africa billy welcome to the program Good afternoon, dear, and good afternoon to your listeners and um, viewers. It's great to join you this afternoon. Thank you. Well, tell us about you, Billy. Tell us a, in, in, in a few seconds a little bit about where you are, where you're from, and a little bit about you. So uh, I, was, I was born and raised in Gauteng, um, South Africa. I moved to Cape Town some 22 years ago to come and work for a mission organization 
local, based locally here in Cape Town. At, said, at the, this mission organization, I met my wife. We married now 22 years. Charmaine and I were married during a biblical worldview conference um, in Franschhoek, Cape Town, nice. on the 7th of June, sorry, 7th of July, uh, 2001. And um, I've, I've, I've always been passionate for the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, as, as, as the Lord has been gracious to me and I've grown, and I've grown older, so that passion has become deeper um more solid and i'm jealous for the name of the lord jesus christ i i view him as a i view him as a king who who uh, is in control of this world um he has given us commandments that he wants us to teach to the world around us and to the nations of the world and i want to see this nation which uh, held out a lot of hope not only to its own citizens 30 years ago, but to the nations of the world who fought for uh, the, the, the end of apartheid yeah, in South Africa in 1994 um, with, uh, with the hope of promise, with the hope of prosperity for its citizens. Um, I want to see that promise realized and I believe that it is up to the church in South Africa to push back at the, the evil that uh, threatens to overwhelm us and to hold out the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thanks. Thanks for sharing that with us indeed. Um, so we, this be an ally celebrating pride 2023. This is the, uh, the poster for, uh, well, one of the posters for, for Woolworths and uh, obviously getting some attention. I think um, their Twitter feed was filled this last week and uh, a lot of people on social media um, uh, for uh, and against um mm -hmm. what's taking on this particular this particular stand now we know this is uh uh not uncommon right we see uh in the u.s uh companies like target um budweiser and nike and, and and other people um succumbing bowing to the uh lgbtqia plus agenda um by going down the route of exactly similar words being inclusive using words like justice uh, equality, so forth and so on. And we've seen the uh, result of that in the U.S. with the stocks plummeting in, 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 in Target and Budweiser and, and so forth. Um, tell me a little bit about what's the response been like uh, in South Africa with the people, uh, or how have they been responding to uh, Woolworth's approach here? Well, dear, yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting to see. Um, the, the news really broke last week, Thursday, Friday, um, as we came into what is now known internationally, or at least in the West, predominantly as Gay Pride Month. Right. Um, right. The, the, as, 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 the, as the news got out and people started sharing on social media what um, Woolworths was beginning to promote, <laughs> although it's not entirely a new thing. Mm -hmm. Last year, uh, I was walking through a a local shopping center, Cavendish Square, where we have a branch of Woolworths. Um, and Woolworths, look, Woolworths is quite well, has a large footprint in South Africa, um, mm. especially in the, um, our main cities. They have large retail stores that's, as, uh, that sell both uh, quality clothing as well as good, good, a good range of foodstuffs. Um, and then they have smaller stores that almost uh, fill the the, the 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 space of a local cafe um, that that people can access in their communities. Mm -hmm. So they have a large footprint. But at this particular store, walking through there last year, I noticed a, a sticker similar to the one that you just showed on uh, on screen that was advertising Woolworths uh, support for. Yeah. Gay Pride Month, and um, well, yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't. What has happened uh, coming into twenty twenty three is they have gotten more brazen, um, as you as, as you explained just now. They are inviting their customers to become allies of the LGBTQ movement. They have established, I believe, and if I may refer to their own website, I'm just going to call that up quickly 
um, in, in an introduction to what they referred in, in an introduction to this program or this yeah. project that they're running. They say an LGBTQIA plus ally is someone who supports, stands up for, respects, uplifts, and celebrates the LGBTQI plus community, whether you're educating yourself about LGBTQI plus yep. community or sharing content and et cetera. Um, it's, it's both promoting it uh, for, their, for their staff. Yep. They're promoting it to their customers. And um, they're playing into they're playing into the, the politics of the matter. Um, unfortunately, the African National Congress government, um, and, and along with its opposition, um, the Democratic Alliance opposition is more um, supportive of the LGBTQ movement. So I can give more details into that just now. But uh, they, for example, have a web page on their website. This is now the Democratic Alliance in South Africa. Hmm. Have a web page on their website devoted to uh, LGBTQ promotion, hmm. um, but the ANC, as government, takes responsibility for the laws um, and gender equality promotion in the workplace uh, under labour law here in South Africa. So yeah. we've come into this year, and they are more brazen. They are pro they are promoting the whole LGBT agenda more aggressively right now yeah um i remember thanks thanks for sharing that i i remember a few years ago um i was speaking at a conference in south africa and, and people were saying well you know we're watching you on social media we see the um the public preaching we recognize the the, the, the um how the lgbtq community here in england is responding to the preaching um and i remember people in south africa saying oh well you know um um, we don't have that here, you know, uh, that's not happening here. We put, and I, I remember somebody saying to me at that time, we're, we're still pretty safe in our schools, they said to me. Because I said, you know, schools are so dangerous here in the UK in the sense of how <laughs> the schools are trying uh, uh, deliberately, intentionally to, to indoctrinate children from primary school age. And I was sharing that with somebody and I said, oh, you know, thankfully in South Africa, we're safe, that's not happening. And I said to them, do you know what? This thing is going to arrive like a tsunami on your shores not very long from now. And it was not a sense of prophesying anything or what. This is the truth. Um, it, it's going to arrive on your shores. And so here it is. Uh, it's arrived on the shores um, uh, of uh, South Africa and breaking forth through this major brand called Woolworths. Now, and be an ally. I mean, that's a, that's a big thing, right? That means partner with us. That means come alongside us. That means... Um, uh, um, you know, toil with us, whatever we want to, whatever synonym we want to put there would be an ally. Uh, this is, this is a, this is an important thing for a Christian to consider, right? Uh, I believe, I mean, this is Christians who shop there. Uh, so we're, 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 we're trying to say to a Christian, how, how should Christians respond to this? Surely Christians should consider um, where they shop now. And, and because, you know, when we consider Second uh, Corinthians 6, 17, where we Paul says to come out from among them. Don't be don't be a part of them. Come out from among them. You know, uh, don't be a part of what they're doing. So if you're gonna if you're gonna continue to shop at Woolworths, how are we as the Christian, in a way, contributing even financially uh, to the upkeep of the LGBT you know QI you know community and movement? Because Woolworths did say, isn't it, that that if you if you support them, um, part of the part of the proceeds is going to go to supporting their group uh, financially. They're going to use their profits to further the agenda. Yeah, and we'll, and we know what the agenda is, right? Let's let's be clear on the agenda. The agenda is uh, this is for for Christians watching this. Uh, the the agenda is pretty clear. Our eyes need to be open to see what it is. This is trying to get even the youngest, the children, the young mm -hmm. people, uh, into their. Uh, within their claws, under their reach, under their... their influence. Sorry, say that. Go ahead. Into their influence. Uh, there's, there's a there's a there's a strong um, push to to bring children into the influence of the gay agenda as early as possible. Um, we we're seeing it. I mean, our friends in America are, are dealing with it in 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 their schools. Um, oh, it's it's more visible there. 
um, for whatever reason. In the UK, um, organizations like the Christian Institute and Christian Concern, yeah. um, Christian Voice, um, are raising it uh, in your schools. Uh, we're seeing how a teacher in the UK was recently dismissed um, and, and, and he's, even cl he's, he's even been stopped from being able to get work as a teacher because he called a, he misgendered, as they say, a student in his, in his, in his school. Yeah. But the, the push is the push is is to bring children into the under the influence of the LGBTQ movement as early as possible. Yeah, well, it's it's, it's and and it's interesting you say that. I mean, we have you know truly those organisations like Christian Institute and Christian Concern and and, I, and others in the UK that are actively working to protect our Christian freedoms. Um, but our freedoms here are equally under threat. I mean, at, at the moment, I'm facing a legal case. The, the police are trying everything that, that they can to have me arrested or stopped from preaching. And one of the warning notices they issued, it was an illegal notice, uh, one of the warning notices they issued, they said, if you, I'm, I'm not to speak to an evolutionist. Well, we'll leave that aside because, uh, you know, since when did evolution has become a, 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 a group that was becoming a minority that they need to be protected? <laughs> the other one was, I'm not allowed to speak to uh, to someone who's homosexual. I I, yeah. I must keep my my views and my opinions to myself in the public square. Uh, so they become such a such a protected group now that saying anything, even raising an objection or asking a question about what does it mean to be gay or what is a lesbian or what does it mean to be transgender, because the LGBTQ IA plus they're continuing to add these alphabets after them. That's why the plus is there, uh, and uh, you know. We, don't, we we want to ask those questions. Our, our children need answers to those questions as we as we as we try to educate them. And as soon as you try to answer that, you're already labeled as transphobic or homophobic. Yeah. I've noticed even on on one of your posts that uh, you, you were um, you know somebody uh, somebody accused you of um, there you are standing outside the Woolworths, and um, on that picture uh, somebody responded by saying. Um, something like happy homophobic month or something yeah no, there, are, well, there is unfortunately a, a, a large there is a there is unfortunately a small portion of our society that is brought into the support of the lgbtq movement um uh, for whatever for whatever reasons the the a lot of our families in south africa even my own family um we have a, a we have a relative who has identified as a homosexual um, or come out as it is. So it, where 30 years ago it was an unusual thing because of the politics of the times and um, dare I say, uh, as, as, as I read Romans and especially Romans chapter 1, um, that because of this nation, uh, Having, having been having been a strong Christian nation um, and and I always felt I always feel awkward about saying that because we know that there was nothing Christian about apartheid yeah. but even during the apartheid years our various communities were more god-fearing whether it was uh, so-called colored Indian black or white there was a greater there was a greater knowledge of who God was who God is, um, and 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 a sense of morality than what there is today. And over the last, over the last twenty seven years, um, there has been this turnaround where, and and it's pushed by the media and it's pushed by Western media. But even in our even in our South African context, our local um, TV and movie producers um, have 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 taken up the have taken up the cause, where a soap. A, a weekday soapy um, TV series called Siemendalan, which was very popular. I mean, I watched it, and uh, uh, many South Africans would watch the program in the afternoon. But I, I saw, and I be, and and I became, I got to the point where I said, I cannot watch this TV series anymore because they're promoting mm -hmm. the LGBTQ agenda. Um, and, and and it was predominantly an Afrikaans uh, yeah. program, but even 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 for the so-called black market in South Africa, there has been a push 
um, towards our, our African neighbors um, mm. to, to, to promote the LGBTQ agenda amongst them um, and, other, and other ungodly practices. So, so we've turned away from God. And as Romans chapter 1 says, as, as a people turn away from worshiping the true God, so mm. God... And this is and this is and and this became scary for me. Uh, I think about two years ago when I really understood what it meant for God to be handing a society over. Yeah. The New Living Translation uses the word "abandoned." Mm. God abandoned them too. And I, when I, as I understood and I grasped the, the the full impact of that of what God was saying, what God is saying to us through the Apostle Paul, that we. It started, I mean, there was a time in South Africa, as in many other parts of the Western world, where if your daughter was pregnant, um, it was a shame on the family. Just 40, 50 years ago, um, you didn't tell anybody about it. Now it's even acceptable in our churches. Yep. Um, yep. Oh, sorry, many churches, <laughs> not yep. all churches. Yep. Um, then, then, there was, then there was this move to adultery. And I mean, I'm what... I was born in 1970, so my history goes now 53 years that I've observed personally. Um, there was adultery became more prominent. Um, in, in the 80s, we, we, we had effeminate boys at school. Um, but no one that really came out as gay. Um, in, in, in America and Britain, I think it was more, uh, more acceptable to come out as gay in those societies in the 80s already. But South Africa only really opened up to the whole thing in, in the 1990s. Right. And by 1996, it had opened so wide that our, that our, that our government actually uh, legalized or passed a law that allowed for so-called civil unions, civil unions to happen, um, so-called gay marriage here in South Africa. And it has just snowballed. Um, and mm. I, for one, am saying... We need to resist. Um, yeah, let me let me yeah. allow you to ask the next question. Yeah, I mean, just good. So you know, we, we, we're glad for the context, and l like you like you said, it's, it's absolutely right. Um, the, the 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 agenda is to uh, is, is, is to capture families, is to capture the young people. I mean, there was a there was a video a couple of years ago that was circulating on social media, and it said um, there was a man on there who identified as homosexual, and he said. We're coming after your children. And everyone said that was just a joke. And yeah. we said at that time, it's an absolute reality that we're coming yes. after your children. Now, um, how should Christians respond? If you're a Christian watching this today, uh, my, my brother Billy and I are saying to you, firstly, th this is not something you should bury your head in the sand. In. You know, mm -hmm. um, putting your earplugs on and acting like you, you, know, you, you, you don't know what's going on is, is the most foolish, the most unwise thing to do. Um, you, you have to listen to what's going on and be able to bring a biblical worldview. What does the Bible say? You know, what does God say about this? And so what, hence we're asking the question, Woolworth's pride, if you shop there, if, or even if you don't shop there, you know somebody who does shop there. And if it's not Woolworth's this year, it'll be Game or uh, Checkers Hyper or wherever these big brands are. Uh, uh, advertising, they're just waiting for someone to lead the way. Woolworth's here is leading the way. And, and they're going to get on board with this. And they're going to try their best to capture the families. This is not about. This is not about. If you look at it, if we look at it as Christians, right, uh, brother, if we're discerning this, this is not about any sort of justice. This is about getting more people on board to agree with their sinful life. And I think, uh, not just I think, I, I, I would kind of hold my head up. And hold my hand up and say, I, I think what one of what the problem is here is that in a lot of churches, and I would say even a majority of the churches, that this matter is not being raised. Nobody in the pulpit, and I'll bring you on this to, to speak because you, you you're on the ground there in South Africa, and you can tell me whether I'm right or wrong. There are very few churches in South Africa that are addressing this as a matter of sin, uh, the same way that they would do abortion. They're not talking about abortion. And there are people sitting in churches that have had abortions. Uh, so um, that's the matter then for forgiveness on, on how to come, how they come to the Lord's Supper and things like that. So the minister's not attending to that. So on the matter of sexuality and, and, and gender, uh, the churches are not, some churches, oh, sorry, a majority of the churches are not. The majority, yeah. 
there are some churches that are. I would say the Reformed churches are definitely talking about this uh, in, in, in their sermons. They're, they're addressing the, the, the sin at hand. But a majority of the churches are not. They're focused on their maintenance. They're focused on how they get to feel better today. Uh, uh, they don't want to get involved in what they see as an argument or a debate or things like that. And um, correct me if I'm wrong. In, in, in majority of the churches, ministers are just not concerned about taking up this matter. Uh, brother dear, I am concerned that I don't know that the majority of the church is doing the work of the Great Commission as a whole uh, to the extent that our Lord Jesus requires us to do. Um, the, 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 the fact that abortion and L the LGBTQ have become as widely accepted as what they are right now is as a result of us not doing the work of the Great Commission. Now, if you know, some people would argue with me, but Billy, um, people, people all over South Africa know about the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. Uh, just a few weeks ago, um, God impressed this on me that uh, I can ask. The, you, 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 you showed photos of where I was standing yesterday, and um, I could ask Muslim people in that area, um, Hindu people. Uh, people of various cultural backgrounds uh, that go through our shopping centers and that walk our streets here in South Africa, if they know about Jesus? And the answer would be yes. I could ask them, um, do you know that Jesus saves? And the answer would be yes. I have, you know, um, 20, years that, 20 years ago, I, came, I became familiar with uh, the evangelism training known as the Way of the Master by Ray Comfort, yep. uh, right? Uh, using and and using the law in evangelism, and uh, it set me uh, it set me on a path of um, exploring and studying um, other writers. Um, John Bunyan, who wrote about uh, who wrote Pilgrim's Progress, um, yep. also wrote about the law. Um, John Wesley said, "Preach ninety percent law, ten percent grace," mm. um, and, and I can quote a few others, but. I have moved from asking people if they know about Jesus, which I know they do, to asking them, can you name the Ten Commandments? Mm. The Great Commission that Jesus gives us in Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 to 20 is, all authority is given to me in heaven and on earth. Now, I'll start there. Who has all authority on heaven, in heaven and on earth right now? Mm. Many Christians think it's the devil. Mm. <laughs> Jesus says... He has all authority mm. in heaven and on earth. Yep. Um, go, make go make disciples of all nations, not individual people only. Yeah, we, we must speak. We must reach out to individual people, but we must have this nation's view in, in our eyes at the same time, especially our own nations. So I have South Africa and especially Cape Town and the Western Cape in view right now. Mm. Um Go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. Yeah. And that, I argue, is where we are falling short. We are not teaching our nations to obey everything that Jesus has commanded us. Mm -hmm. And we, we, need to, we need to get back to that. Um, that is what saved Britain in the 1700s. Yeah. Uh, Britain... Britain in the 1700s, at the time of John Wesley, George Whitfield, William Wilberforce, um, was was a nation that was more. It was in a worse state, according to what I've read of Christian history writers concerning Britain and that time. Britain was in a worse state than South Africa is right now, and arguably even worse than what Britain is right now. But the preaching of the gospel turned the UK around. It mm -hmm. didn't only impact the UK for good, but it impacted on South Africa, <laughs> Asia, um, and many other nations around the world for good. Mm -hmm. The gospel is still the power of God into salvation. The problem is our churches need to um, need to recapture that thought, and we need to get back to doing the, the basics of the gospel, not just talking to people about Jesus. Yes, we must. We must lift Jesus up 
more, but we need to be teaching what he commanded us to do. Mm. Indeed. Um, when I talk to a lot of people, um, obviously uh, across the world and even a lot in South Africa when, I, when I'm there, um, I recognize that somebody would look look at a picture like this and say, oh, you know, um, there's nothing wrong. They, they look like a bunch of happy people, you know, uh, why should we why should we be against this you know they're all happy they can they're living their own lives and things like that why should we why should we get in, involved in this and i think one of the biggest problems we have as we diagnose the church there or believers there um i think it's the absolute um deficiency in uh, the knowledge of the word of god um, yeah. i mean even when we're facing false prophets i mean when i when i when I attended to the matter of uh, Siva Mudli, uh, the, the amount of people that were raging against me, uh, and raging against us in the program, their comments was just riddled, with, filled with um, lack of biblical knowledge. Simplest things, very, very simple things like, you know, who are you to judge? And, you know, only God is the judge and things like that. Just very simple things. And it's leading me more to believe, like I said a few minutes ago, which you agreed with that, this is not being addressed in the pulpit. There is no systematic teaching of the Bible in the majority of the churches. Um, they're responding to whatever the need is at the moment. So people uh, would come at a particular, oh, we have a prayer service for this need or a sermon for that need. I, I'm not even sure if majority of them call them sermons, uh, but a, a church service for this or a church service for that. Um, but there's no actual teaching, systematic teaching of the Bible. And correct me, in, uh, yeah. as I say this in the majority of the churches. And this is the kind of response I've been getting. So even on this issue, I do believe, if you're watching this today, uh, dear Christian friend today, dear brother and sister in Christ today, dear family of God today, if you're watching this today, has your pastor been educating you scripturally, biblically, about sexuality and gender? Because if he has not been teaching you, you must pull on his coat. You must make a meeting and say, please teach us what the Bible says about yes. this. Please teach us why God says it's an abomination in Leviticus. Or why Paul says in 1 Corinthians, uh, um, as were some of you, sodomites, homosexual, asenokoitos is the Greek. You know, uh, uh, you some of you, but you've been delivered from that. And even in that is, is a wonderful message of transformation, deliverance being born again. These were people who were once sodomites, once homosexuals, and have now been delivered from that. And so, uh, and, and they're serving God, uh, because Paul says, as were some of you. So it is it is my belief that, that, that churches are not, not addressing the issue by teaching on this. So the people then are, are found to be in the place of lack. They don't know how to respond to this. So when they walk past Woolworths and see this, this is not alarm bells going off. Uh, this is not their eyes opening and saying, oh, what is this? They're just like, oh, it's nothing. And they just walk in. Am I right in making that assumption? You're very, you're very right, um, dear. And uh, I, 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 was going to, I was going to refer to 1 Corinthians uh, 6 myself. Um, uh, you beat me to, you beat me to that uh, reference. So I'm, going to, I'm just going to refer to um, 1 Timothy 1. Timothy 1 um, from verse 8 but we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully knowing this that the law is not made for the righteous person but for the lawless and insubordinate mm. for the ungodly and for sinners for the unholy and profane for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers for manslayers for fornicators for sodomites for kidnappers for liars for perjurers and if there's anything if there is any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. This law that God gave Moses on Sinai is not only uh, directed at Christian people, at born-again believers. Mm -hmm. It is directed at the unsaved. Those people that right now um, <laughs> seem to be... Uh, and, and, and maybe they genuinely express some kind of joy. I mean, I, I remember when I was, un, I was unsaved that um, I could express happiness at a local pub or wherever in, in whatever ungodliness I was practicing. Yeah. But we know that, um, that, that pursuing sin will result in unhappiness, uh, if not in this life, 
definitely in eternity. Yep. And as I said to someone while I was outside yesterday, um, I am driven not because I hate homosexual people. I am driven by a love for homosexual sinners because I know that if I don't speak up, their eternal well-being is going to be too horrific to, for us to even begin to comprehend right now. Um, it, is, it, is something, it is something that I wish they could just get a little grasp of. Mm. But the, the, we, we have been, again, we have been entrusted with the gospel. The mm. scriptures talk quite clearly about what, happen, what, what hell is like. Jesus describes it in words, uh, for example, that the worm, never, the worm never dies and the fire never goes out. It is a place of horror um, that we need to warn people about. And by God's grace, the Spirit will work in their hearts to bring them. So the greatest opportunity, uh, what, 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 what really warmed my heart yesterday was we have a large foreign community in, yeah, in South Africa um, that have moved from other countries north of us into South Africa, into Cape Town, who are taking advantage of um, entrepreneurial opportunities. So uh, we have these motorbike riders who deliver food mm. for pick, for various retail stores. And outside pick and pay where I was standing, um, it was a, a, for, a, a foreign man that took those pictures for me, um, either from the Congo. Uh, he, he might have been from the Congo, I think. And those foreign men, there were about 10, maybe 15 people at one time, without... Without fail, all 15 of those men supported what I was doing. Mm. Um, there were a few South African citizens who walked past me. There was particularly one man who said, you're offside, you're offside. Um, I tried to engage him in conversation, but he wasn't quite prepared to come and talk. Mm. Um, I was approached by another, another person um, who engaged me in conversation, and I was able to... Um, uh, engage, uh, present the gospel to him. He asked very good questions. Um, and so that was a great opportunity. But there were people who, uh, I had security approach me um, while I was there, asked me to move from where I was standing because um, it was, it's, they said it's, uh, uh, the property belongs to Old Mutual. Right. Um, and so I said to them, well, come, but bring proof because that, that area is rather strange. It is, um, it is public space. The, the pavements are maintained by the city council. There's a tar road not far from where I was standing in front of me, which is public road maintained by city council. So anything that is city council is public property. It doesn't belong to the said company that owns that um, mm. shopping center. Um, I, did, I did move to another side of a boom that they had there. Um, and then that made them happy. They then subsequently, much much to my delight, <laughs> because I intended going to speak to the manager of Woolworths, of that Woolworths store, um, they called the manager out to come and speak to me. Mm. Um, and I had the opportunity to address him. And the man identified himself as a Christian man who agreed with my sentiment. But um, what, he, what was his words? He says, uh, uh, the Christian faith is a private affair. We cannot be um, forcing it on other people. Again, so, even, yeah. again, even with that, that's, 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 what, that's what a lot of churches are actually teaching. I mean, I, I, I've, been, mm -hmm. I've been trying to address a particular issue, um, even in, in Durban. Uh, and and a, a lot of people recognize that, that the person I'm talking about had committed that sin. They, they, they saw it. Uh, but none of them said anything about it. None of them. Yeah. You know, the, the biblical principle to go to the, the person who's sinning or to go to the person who's wrong and tell them uh, uh, the, the error of their ways is, is totally foreign to so many people. Um, yeah. And there's a number of reasons for that. I mean, we could go into that in a whole new podcast about how they're scared not to, not to uh, lose friends and family. They're, they're scared they're not going to be invited to the 21st birthday party, so forth and so on. But this is Christianity, brother. This is Christianity. And the message that is being preached in a lot of pulpits is exactly what the smiling preacher from the U.S. is saying. You're going to get your best life now and come to Jesus Christ and everything is just going to be hunky-dory and spiffy and tickety-boo or whatever you want to call it. Everything is going to be good. 
nobody is saying to people, come to Jesus Christ and you're going to be persecuted. Come to Jesus Christ and you're going to get locked up. Paul says, I'm coming to your town. Um, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not looking forward to being in the Marriott. I'm looking forward to being in prison. That's what's going to happen to me when I come to your town. And, and you know, we, we, we're, we're experiencing a, a, a similar sort of thing here. Not, not, I'm not in any way yeah. aligning myself with the Apostle Paul. Who, who, who am I to do that? Uh, uh, you know, we, we, if we fall so far less and short of, of his example. Um, but we have a little taste of that. I mean, when mm -hmm. we're preaching here, uh, and, and, um, and I want to tie in with what, what you said earlier on about loving, loving all sinners, you know, and I think as Christians approach this, you know, um, it is indeed sin. Uh, the matter of homosexuality, the matter of man lying with man and women with women is sin. You cannot avoid it. You cannot avoid it. Christian believer today, you are created in the image of God. Mankind is created in the image of God. Uh, and and this, this perverted image, this idea that man can lie with man and woman with women is satisfying the sinful, carnal nature. It is what you want to do and you're doing what you want want to do that's it that's a, it's as simple as that and so these, these folks in our city we were getting beaten up on that day i had so many things thrown at me on that day i had shampoo people bought shampoo and threw it and they they literally beat my wife up you know we we have a we have a we preach outside we got the west we got the oldest wesley chapel in the world in our city and we we, we preach outside there well you you, you don't want to hear what's happened to that chapel because it's a it's an it's an absolute uh tragedy um there are people like this like next month uh, well, actually, this month they'll be having a homosexual affirming service in the chapel, uh, and uh, it's a it's a a group of churches that that are called uh, Christians for Pride, and they are having a, a a service within that chapel. And and when you walk through the chapel and you read the diary and the letters of Wesley, you you cry because you think, you know, this is what the gospel was about in Bristol. Um, so we have a little bit of good heritage. We have Wesley and Whit Whitfield in our city and things like that. So. The point I'm trying to make is that on that day we're preaching and there's, there are no stones on our street. So people bought potatoes, uh, literally went in the shop, bought potatoes and were hurling it. They couldn't get to me. They beat my, beat my wife up and all that. And a man came to me. He said, he said, why don't you just stop? He said, just stop. Why are you getting beaten up like this? Just, just stop. I said to him, brother, because I love you enough to tell you the truth. That is it. That's the tradition of Christianity. That's the... That's what Paul did. That's what Peter did. That's what the Christian martyrs did. That's what the people who were, um, you know, I think of Polycarp, uh, you know, and, you know, um, when when the Romans came to him and said, you, you, you will say, you will say that Caesar is Lord. You will say Kaiser Curios. And he refused to say Caesar is Lord. So mm -hmm. Jesus is Lord in his old age. What is he doing? He was declaring a love for the person by telling him there's only yes. one Lord. There is only one God. It is not Caesar. It is Jesus Christ whom I serve. And I'm prepared to die for that, to tell you the truth. I love you enough to tell you the truth. The thing about this thing with pride and homosexuality and transgenderism and all other things that are going to be added, are Christians loving enough to tell that person they're walking on an old rickety bridge over the lake of fire? And it's only yeah. by the good grace of God that he's kept them from falling into that fire. As Jonathan exactly. Edwards said, the wrath of God is upon them, the cloud following them. And that cloud could break at any moment and the wrath of God fall upon them. And this be the day of salvation that they turn to Jesus Christ. Does the Christian love the sinner enough to tell him that? I think it was Wesley, not Wesley, uh, Spurgeon who said, we preach to people standing between them and hell. And if they are to go to hell, they must climb over us to get to hell. And I think yes. that's where the Christian is falling short. They're not standing between the homosexual and hell. They're not standing between the transgender and hell. They're not standing between the sinner and hell. And I would encourage Christians. I would direct Christians as you did from talking about the Great Commission. The, commi the Great Commission is for all of us, right? Uh, that yeah. we should tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. We Amen. Skirt around it, right? And if no. you're listening to this today, the truth is you have to teach your children first. You know, you're... It's your own family that's your 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 first point of witnessing, and then not not yeah. the outsiders. And your own family need to hear it. Your your five year old son needs to know the truth. Your eighteen year old daughter needs to know the truth. If you're a Christian, so tell the truth that we are indeed created in the image of God, and this is sin, indeed, sin, brother. Uh, I wonder if you want to pick up on that. 
No, you 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 you're spot on. Um, the the desire to suffer, um, and none, none of us none of us want to suffer for no good reason. But the the call of the gospel is that we lay down our own lives and that we take up the cross, and that we are prepared to to put our lives on the line for the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, it's not easy. Uh, it, it takes it, it takes a lot of guts, but um, I know that as as the, the, the when I spend more time in spiritual disciplines, um, in the reading of the Word and in in prayer, God God gives us a, a greater sense of inspiration. If I could use uh, is said uh, said to in, in in so many words, mm. to to and enables us to go and share the gospel with other people. Um, it's not it's not something that comes naturally to me. Um, it, it is something that I make work of, and may God may God continue to give us both the grace mm. to make greater efforts in sharing the go- sharing the gospel in our various spheres of influence um, yeah, outside that Wesley Chapel that you talk of. Um, yeah, in the streets. Uh, um, I thank God uh, that um, uh, uh, that you've enabled our dear brother Chris Simon to some degree to be more effective in his preaching yeah in this in, in the city of cape town mm. um he has been a, a great blessing to me to see how this man who's a member of a uh, of the, the old, one of the oldest denominations in south africa the dutch reformed denomination which denomination like your own church of england in um the uk has 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 gone down the road of accepting the lgbtq movement um uh, Chris Chris Simon's own church, um, known as Tafelberg, Dutch Reformed, um, or Enchia Gemeente Dolerend, uh, Dolerend is a word for mourning, mm. is part of a group of Dutch Reformed churches that have identified as churches in mourning, the denominational position of um, the denying of the authority of the scriptures and and accepting the LGBTQ movement. Yeah. Brother Chris, brother Chris um, has st- stood strong against that, and he's standing strong against that. And he and he preaches five days a week, mm-hmm. yeah, so, sorry, six days a week if the weather's good, um, yeah, on the streets of Cape Town. And uh, and I pray God would raise up more men like him, um, that God would make me as as effective as what He has made uh, Dominic Simon. Yeah, indeed, brother. Um, so you know, just. Uh... content please uh do like and subscribe and uh pass it on to somebody else and share with others um it, you know people are going to say well you know here here, here 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 you are you know you're standing outside of woolworths and you know um I, I i i can't do that you know I, that's that's not for me and and there may be somebody saying well, listen the, the 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 matter is that every christian has an opportunity to witness, to preach the gospel to somebody. This is the talk of the town. This is what everyone's talking about at the moment. I, I, I think you can't escape this on social media or the news, or if you're on Twitter or whatever. Uh, you, everyone's everyone's kind of seeing this news. And people are talking about it in the office. People are talking about it um, in community places or at a restaurants. And it's an opportunity for Christians. These are divine opportunities God has sovereignly given that we yes. must be able to talk about it. It's come yes. to light that Christians must talk. Christians must speak and say, hold on a moment. So I I, I see this as a, a divine opportunity for the church in South Africa, for Christians in South Absolutely. Africa to say, listen, th- yes, this is why we're saying what we're saying, that, that God has divinely created the heavens and the earth. Don't, God has sovereignly made man in his image, both male and female. And this is what sexuality is. And this is what gender is. And this is what marriage is. Beloved in Christ, if you're listening to this today, marriage didn't come about, come about by an evolutionist worldview. The, the world would not know what marriage is without the biblical worldview, without God. God created marriage. God ordained marriage. And so um, th- th- those are opportunities to, to, to speak to people about uh, about God and opportunity to witness these are open doors for you. And, and, and like we said earlier on, addressing the matter that this is against God. This is sin. This is against the law of God. This is the breaking of God's law. This is going everything against God. That's why it's a sin. And so we must call them to repentance, to turn from sin. And before I come back to you, you know, 
you may be thinking, you know, yeah, I hear what you're saying, um, brothers. You know, yeah, it's of concern, but I'm, I'm, I, I just don't feel really concerned at the moment. Let me just help you a little bit here again, if you're listening to this. Let Brother Billy and I help you a little bit. I want to take you back to World War II. I'll take you back to a man called Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler said this. He said, let me control the textbooks and I'll control the nation. Mm -hmm. If I can, if I can, if I can put into the paper what children read, I can tell you how the nation's gonna go. We're seeing that in the UK. And what goes into the schools is how children are being trained. So And yeah, in South Africa. Yes, and it's it's arrived there uh, like a tsunami, right? And, mm -hmm. and and that principle is what's at play here. Because, and I, I've seen this in the last two years. I'm preaching on the streets of our city now for about seven years, every month for seven years. In the last two years, there's been an exponential increase in people identifying as trans. Exponential. It's like somebody put something in the water reservoir and everyone's drinking this water and they're now becoming transgender. It's become a fashion. It's become a fad. It's become something that's cool to do. Um, girls kissing each other, boy, girls dressing as boys, cutting their hair really short, all that kind of stuff. What's happened over the last few years, exponential increase in this whole transgender matter. And that's going to happen in South Africa uh, as well, because they have the internet, they have access mm -hmm. to social media, and they're watching what the Americans are doing, or what the British are doing, or what the Australians are doing, and they want to do the very same thing. So these children, uh, and th this is what Woolworths is doing. They subtly, very subtly, uh, through these adverts, uh, through these posters, like what we see here, uh, I'm going to put it up on the screen again, like what we see here, a bunch of happy people, they're, they're of different color, you know, uh, different race groups, and, you know, different genders, and, you know, uh, show your colors, be who you are, you know, be proud of who you are. Listen, at the end of the, at the, end of the day, we cannot be proud of sin, right, Brother Billy? We cannot be proud yes. of sin. We cannot. There's, uh, right. there's nothing to be proud of when it comes to sin. Um, like you said, it's shame, isn't it? The only thing that we can, the only proper response is shame. Indeed. And uh, yeah. so the whole, the whole, the whole trans, I, I think, I, I think for the Christians watching this today, it's not so much, though this homosexuality, lesbianism is a sin that's on the increase. The one that's exponentially increasing is the transgender one. It's exponentially yeah. increasing. We see that in the UK, we see it in the US. Uh, and like you said, you, you, you're seeing that increase in South Africa. So Christian parents have got to be watchful. They have to be the soldiers on the wall. The Christian fathers need to be attentive at all times. And I would tell you, Christian father, stop, stop being deficient in your duty. Stop being derelict in your duty as the provider and protector. What do I mean by that? You provide the money, but you've also got to provide the teaching. Mm -hmm. You've got to be the protector. You can stand strong. And fight off the invader who comes into your house. But you also need to protect your children and your family spiritually. Spiritually. Yes. By what they listen to and what you're teaching them. So I ask you, dear man right now, if you listen to this, what are you teaching your children? And if you're not teaching them, well, shame on you for that. I'll say it openly. You need to repent of because you're being derelict in your yes. duty. But also, if, if, if you're not teaching them, who are they listening to? Who are they listening to? And that's the problem. Am I right, brother? Yeah, um, our, our Christian our Christian parents are happily sending their children off to public schools where the public school teachers are indoctrinating them with uh, and, uh, teaching against God. Um, we we happily equip our children with, um, with with cell phones that give them access to popular social media, be it uh, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, whatever the case might be. And uh, our children, unfortunately, access these. What, what's popular to their peers um, and it's the, the, the unfortunate fact is that godliness is not the most popular thing in our amongst our youth today yeah. um, the church does not the church has lost control of the world um, I you know I, I believe I believe in the UK you still you, you still have certain limits as to how how late a business, can operate on a on, on the Lord's Day on a Sunday. Um, I think it's I think it's five o'clock. I think um, uh -huh. five o'clock on, on on the Lord's Day. Yeah. They, 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 they still um, in the in the UK. I was doing some research about this because South Africa gave up on the Lord's Day in 1985 after for many years um, we having 
having limited what people could do or even go to the movies on the Lord's Day. Mm. I mean, that would that sounds totally foreign to young people today. What, you couldn't go watch a movie on a Sunday? Mm. You couldn't go shopping on a Sunday? Well, that's how it was. Um, blasphemy. You could not blaspheme the Lord Jesus Christ here in South Africa um, freely 30 years ago. Yeah. Um, these laws, these laws were part of our statutes in Canada, America, Britain and South Africa, Australia yeah. too. It's yeah. not like that today uh, because we, we've we taken the foot off the pedal and we've said, well, you know, Jesus is coming back soon. Things must get worse before he comes. Mm. And, 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 and we've allowed it to, to we've, we've encouraged it mm. to snowball instead of, um, yes, Jesus is going to return. That's my hope. But yeah. um, can I can I leave this world to become a, 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 a world that is more wicked for for future generations of South Africans until Christ comes? Mm. Um, I can't. Mm. Um, mm. Uh, 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 that talent that Jesus has given us, um, uh, referring to the, 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 the parable of the talents, that talent that he's given us to, to, to share the gospel with others, I cannot go and hide it away because yeah. he, he, he had nothing good to say to that man that went and hid the talent away. Mm -hmm. um, I want to be one who, who, who is able to stand before Jesus on, on that day of his return and uh, hold my head up high and uh, re rejoicing before him say, Lord, you gave me five talents. He has five more. Yeah. Yeah. Um, true. Absolutely. Ab absolutely right. I mean, the the, the 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 title is um the world is pride how should christians respond i mean we've been we've been trying to address that and i think as a christian watching this today you know um how you respond one of the things you, you would say is i mean the the, the more you shop at woolworths the, the more you're giving your money towards this particular sin uh, uh and uh as my brother and i were talking yesterday he, him and i would were agreeing yesterday that we'd actually agreed on something though we'd met met just recently we don't support starbucks we don't buy from starbucks i don't buy coffee from starbucks because mm -hmm. and even if i had to give one pound to starbucks it's one pound towards the killing of an unborn child uh, they exactly. support abortion on a major scale so i'm not i'm not going to buy from them i'm not going to i'm not going to support them in any way i'm not going to no. visit them um you know i'm not going to not, not even a bottle of water from them uh, I'm going to try and go to another store uh, to do that. Um, so you giving your hard-earned money to Woolworths, um, they said, Woolworths said, well, they're going to take a, the, the part of that and support a particular group, a particular group called the LGBTQI plus QIA plus group. So are you happy with that? Are you happy with what God has, God has blessed you with? You pray and ask God, Lord, help me today providentially. And God blesses you and he gives you work in which you're able to labor with your hands or your mind uh, and you work and you get you earn a living from that god's blessed you with that and you take what god's blessed you and you give it now you give it to this altar you you leave it at this altar of lgbtqia a plus people uh to to promote that uh religion to promote that faith and that philosophy and that ideology i mean surely you can see that's wrong surely you can see there's something wrong with it. you wouldn't go and you wouldn't go and give your money to uh, an idol somewhere as a Christian. You wouldn't go and give your money to a false religion or a faith somewhere. You wouldn't go and give your money to support, let's say, a local tavern or a bar or a drunkard. You wouldn't go and give your money to a whorehouse, uh, a prostitution house, uh, every 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 month or every week. Um, why then would you want to give money to Woolworths who are supporting yeah. this particular sin? Come on now, Christian. Come on, Christian. How should Christians respond? Don't shop there. Oh, but their Don't food you. is very good. I know their food is good. I know everyone loves their. Yes. You know, Billy was talking about their burgers, right? I mean, it, their you, burger patties are very good. <laughs> yeah, good quality stuff. You know, you want yeah. good quality stuff. Okay, you know, you're going to get it. But listen, listen, it is what pleases the Lord more. It is what yeah. pleases this pleases the Lord that you do not give your money to them, do not support them. So stay away from it. So what yes. you're saying is number one, you may not be able to protest outside. But you can preach. So the one piece protest, the other piece preach. You may not be able to protest, but you can certainly preach. Who do you, who do you start preaching to first? Your own family, your own friends, mm -hmm. people around. The other thing is, don't give them your money. Don't buy from yes. them. Stay away from it. You want to pick up on that, Billy? 
Yeah, um, definitely. That's that, that's what we're doing right now in South Africa. Myself and other and other friends are beginning to encourage our, our friends um, to to not support Woolworths until they withdraw their support for this. Um, this is our goal. Um, I don't know that. I don't know how long it's going to be. Uh, this is right now. It's this Gay Pride Month, but um, I'm of the opinion that. Uh, if it takes longer than Gay Pride Month, if it if it has to go longer than June, we will we will not shop at Woolworths until they change their stance. Um, and then, so, so yes, we must we must withhold our money from them, we must hold our support from them, we must encourage our neighbours um, where people are able to. They must go out and uh, and and do a do a protest or. Um, call call some friends together and just pray. Um, maybe write a tract if you're not able to. If you if you're not able to do anything, just write a tract or obtain a tract. Um, I'm sure. I, I don't know, dear. Maybe you've write, you've written something that um, you can equip people with um, that we can give to people and 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 and, and warn them away from ungodliness and, and encourage them to 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 to, to turn to Christ. Um, people can do that uh, quite freely yes, in South Africa still. Um, encourage people to that and pray. Pray that God would, uh, that in His mercy, that God would cause the, the management of Woolworths to turn away from this wickedness. Alternatively, that God would bring about the downfall of that business if they do not turn away. Um, I'm not afraid to ask that. That's my prayer. Um, people have said, yeah, but what about the people employed at Woolworths? Well, I know that there's a number of Christians that are employed by Woolworths. Um, they outnumber the ungodly. Mm -hmm. I have no doubt about that. Um, and it is for them to decide, will they stand with Christ or will they stand with the devil? Um, and we have, to, we, have to, we have to make our choices um, for, the, for the benefit, not just of Woolworths, but for the benefit of South Africa. For the benefit of this nation, we have to push back against evil and and, and encourage the growth of righteousness. Amen. Well, um, we're just about uh, reaching the end of our, our program, and uh, we want to thank you for uh, joining us today on Truth Matters. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we've been having a good discussion on the matter of Woolworth's pride and how should Christians respond. And I just want to say... Um, Dear brother and sister in Christ, dear family of God, if you have any questions um, you want to um, pose, uh, you can get in contact with um, uh, our brother Billy. I'll, I'll try and put a link, you know, somewhere on on my Facebook post where you can link up with him. Uh, you can always link up with me or send me a message. I, I, I am a pastor here, so I, I deal with a lot of questions from people across the world on many subjects. Uh, and uh, the Lord willing, I will have time to respond to you. Uh, and you may be asking, well, how do we respond to this? How do we deal with the fact that people will call us homophobic and things like that, and or transphobic? And so, yes, we can, we can, we can help you. We can uh, spend time with you, uh, or send you information, or refer you to uh, churches in the area or in your city that are, that are laboring towards uh, helping Christians be more biblically based uh, concerning their responses. Uh, so we can try and, and and do that to help you. So drop us a message. Drop me a message. And we'd love to uh, be able to help you. Um, so, Brother Billy, your last words before we close. Brother dear, thank you very much for the opportunity to spend this uh, uh, this time with you this afternoon, and um, thank you for your 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 concern for South Africa. That's much appreciated, and I trust that this has been a blessing to your to the people that view this. And uh, may God's grace uh, conti continue to be with each one um, that uh, that comes in the hearing of this program. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Billy. Well, thank you, friends, for uh, for joining us today. Um, we we're talking about Woolworths Pride, so Woolworths, the South African store. Uh, how should Christians respond? I do hope that this has benefited you in some way. And like we said, if you want to drop me a message, I'd be more than happy to uh, speak to you. Um, about it. And uh, one of the ways you could help me uh, to talk more about this is to so people who are longing for the truth or searching for the truth and for people who truth matters, you know, and so we're hoping that 
uh, you'll be able to share it with others. Um, remember us in prayer. Uh, I am preaching at a Pride event this year um, in, in Wales, uh, in the Welsh Valleys. And I'm, I'm going to be, it's, it's the first time I'm preaching in Wales for the Pride. I normally preach in my city. Uh, Pride's getting bigger and bigger every year. Uh, I, I, I preach in my city. Uh, for the pride events uh so but this year i'm not preaching in my city i'm preaching in in in, in the welsh valleys in wales and so if you can if you have an opportunity please do remember me in prayer so well that's it for now and uh we'll be back again with a um a new um a a new um program of uh, truth matters uh my name is dia mudley once again thank you for uh joining with us today and we do hope to